coming to the end of the semester and one of the things that my students are tasked to do is to create a fashion illustration in Illustrator. Now Illustrator is not the first piece of software that I would reach for if I'm creating an illustration. However, the course syllabus is the course syllabus, so this is what we have to do. So I tried to come up with some ways that would make this task a little bit more efficient, a little bit more effective, as I normally like to do with everything I do in Illustrator. And I think I've come up with some good options. So I do want to find more ways to make this process easier because I feel like Illustrator could be a good tool to use. However, I'm not there yet, so more to come, more videos in the future. Um, but in the interim, here's what I came up with so far. There are a few Illustrator tools that I use for this process. The pencil tool, and sometimes the pen tool, the blob brush, brushes, and width profiles. Some type of drawing tablet with a stylus is also highly recommended. It will make a lot of the tracing much easier. You can approach this one of two ways, bringing in a rough sketch and redrawing it with your pencil, or bringing a black and white hand-drawn sketch into Illustrator and just adding color to that. Let's start with the rough sketch option. Scan or take a picture of your sketch and open it or drag it into Illustrator. Make the sketch layer a template layer by double-clicking the layer and choosing Template. This will automatically dim the layer and lock it. Next, create a new layer for tracing your sketch. Change your fill color to none and your stroke color to black. Choose the pencil tool and begin tracing your sketch. And since the pencil tool is a freehand drawing tool, you should be able to just draw as if you were putting pen to paper. If you're not using a stylus, the pen tool may be a better option because it'll give you a little more control. But regardless of which drawing tool you use, Notice that I'm not worried about closing shapes. Now this might seem like a terrible method right now since we know that in Illustrator, you must have closed shapes in order to add color. However, for this, we're going to create a second set of shapes to add the color. So closing these lines are not really important. Now as I continue to draw, you'll see me start to switch to the width profiles. You can do this as you're drawing, or you can go back after you've completed the line drawing and pick and choose the lines to add a width profile to.
Once the main outline is done, I'm gonna to start to work on the face. The first thing I draw in is the mouth, which is relatively easy. Again, I'm using the pencil tool and with profiles to create the mouth shape. Next are the eyes, and I'll draw the overall eye shape with the pencil tool, adding a width profile to both lines. The eye crease. And then using the ellipse tool, I'll add the eyeball and the iris. The eye looks a little strange right now because of the angle of her head, but don't worry, I'll be fixing it soon. Next, it's on to the eyebrows, and you can take two different approaches to the eyebrow. You can keep it very simple and draw a nice arched shape using the width profile to create a clean brow line. Or you can create hairs with a width profile set to a smaller stroke weight. This is obviously much more time consuming, but this is my preferred method because the brows look much more believable. As with eyebrows, I also do lashes one by one. Again, just a personal preference. You can also create a brush for your lashes, and I'll add a link to a tutorial down below with a great method to do this. Now that I'm pretty much finished with the eye, I'll just use the free transform tool to make some last minute adjustments and reposition the eye before reflecting it to the other side. And since her face is on an angle, I'll use free transform again, as well as some manual tweaking with the selection tools to reshape and re-angle her eyes so it matches her face. I'll add in a few more width profiles to help define the bridge of her nose. And then actually draw her nose. And then I'll add in some small width profiles around the edges of her face to show a hairline before I start adding color. So the way I add color is using the blob brush. The blob brush functions like the paintbrush tool, except the blob brush creates filled objects instead of strokes. So I'm basically just coloring in an area and when I'm done, I have a closed shape. Once you've finished using the blob brush, you'll most likely need to refine the shape a bit. You've probably drawn outside the lines or there's areas that you might have missed. For the larger areas that need to be removed, the easiest thing is to use the eraser tool. Make sure the object is selected and then erase away the areas that are outside the lines. To refine the shape even more, Use the direct selection tool to move specific points. Once the shape has been edited, you can do some shading on the object. I like to use draw inside in a bristle brush or a thicker line with some width profiles to create some shading. I also like to change the blending mode in the transparency panel and the opacity so that the shadows or highlights are very subtle and they're easily made using the same fill color, just switching it to your stroke color. Use Multiply Blending Mode with a lowered opacity to add shading and the Screen Blending Mode to add highlights.
One thing I'm consciously doing is putting the colored object on its own layer. And it's up to you how many layers you want to create, but it's helpful to at least have one separate layer for color, even if you put all your colored objects in that one layer. Continue to use the blob brush to create filled objects until you've colored all the areas of your sketch. And then you can do any final tweaking, adding shadow and highlights as desired. Now your second option is to bring a black and white sketch into Illustrator that's a bit more polished and finished. And if your drawing skills are really good, this may be a better option for you. Once you bring your sketch into Illustrator, you're going to select it and change the blending mode to multiply. This is going to make the white background of your sketch transparent so that you'll be able to see the colored shapes that you create with the blob brush. Create a second layer for adding color, making sure that you drag that layer underneath the one with the black and white sketch. From here, you're going to use the same technique as you did on the first sketch using the blob brush to color in your sketch and create a closed shape. And then, Use the blending modes with brushes or with profiles to create shadows and highlights. So these two methods are pretty different as far as the time that you have to spend in Illustrator. It's pretty significant. But the reason that there's two methods is because, uh, you know, some people have the preference for drawing by hand and they're better at that. And then there's other people who a rough sketch is the quickest thing that they can do and they can finesse it and make it look their best in Illustrator. So regardless of your preferences, if you have to, one of these methods should work well if you need to add color to an illustration in Illustrator. Thanks for watching. Have a fabulous week and I'll see you next time.